Well, let's open with the new release and then move into our discussion of the future. UBIT. For Open Simulator 0.9.2, please tell us about this new release. Hello, everyone. Glad to see you all. Yeah, last uh, Sunday we did finally did release uh, our new version, the 0. 0.9.2.0, and uh, it has a lot of changes. Almost two years of uh, little incremental improvements. I think the main um, the main feature we can highlight on this version is the support for the new regions environment that is required for new viewers. That changes how our regions look. For example, the moon can now move in an independent way relative to the sun. Then, well, a lot of changes that you can see in our release notes in this link. That's about it. <laughs> Well, thank you for all your hard work. I mean, you make it sound so easy, and yet I recall you working on those those uh, fixes and improvements. So we appreciate it. And it's running now on OS Grid, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so OS Grid is always running, or at least its main regions is always on our development uh, code. In fact, it's already in version uh, 0921 <laughs> development branch. Okay. I already had I already had a little change to the code, so this release is already a bit outdated. Okay. Well, that's what's so great about this is it's constantly in in a, in an improvement cycle and with new releases planned. So, um, Melanie, you know, there's been a lot of hype about the metaverse here lately. We, you know, almost every com company seems to be coming out with a metaverse product or trying to position themselves to take some some of the action. And I was wondering if you had some thoughts about, you know, what are the opportunities and new capabilities that you see rising from the interest in the metaverse? Um, I see definitely that there's development going on that we may be able to um, leverage, especially in terms of uh, finally maybe breaking away from the Second Life viewer and using one of the viewers for one of the other projects for ourselves as well. Um, of course, um, the metaverse has become very much interesting for uh, many different interests business interests because of the uh, pandemic, uh, because it's a way to uh, combat loneliness and uh, get people together um, without spreading anything evil. So um, uh, that is um, where I see um, a chance for Open Simulator um, to uh, position ourselves as the uh, grid software of choice for companies who are too small to develop their own. And um, I believe we um, should potentially even proactively contact companies from which we hear that they're looking to have a metaverse, but we know they're not actually metaverse developers. Um, at the moment, though, I'm uh, not really contributing to the code base of Open Simulator because I'm actually actively working on OS Grid, the grid itself, um, with a uh, yet again a new asset system because it always keeps um, breaching the boundaries, so to speak, and um, every few years it just needs to be renewed. So um, uh, this is uh, something that's also going to benefit larger virtual worlds as companies potentially decide to use Open Simulator. Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, let's face it, we need our worlds working as well as our software, so we appreciate your support. So Krista, what do we need for the future? I mean, wh whether you want to think about the metaverse or you want to think about your original goals when you contributed to the software for strengthening meetings, for, for increasing socialization, and for making it easier to do this worldwide, what do you see coming in the future? Mm -hmm. Hi, Laura. So, um, yeah, this uh, this whole uh, sudden attention to the metaverse was kind of an interesting, surprising twist recently. Um, uh, I, I don't really know what to think about it. It seems like there's a lot of uh, venture capitalists right now with a lot of money, <clears throat> very interested in technology that they know nothing about, which is can be an interesting opportunity for people who have been working on this, in this space for many years, as Melanie said. Um, so, uh, I mean, uh, and people have been 
um, this discovering Open Simulator, uh, that much I can tell you. Um, and, uh, you know, yesterday I was asked by a journalist whether what I thought about the metaverse and whether Open Simulator might be the technology for it. And, um, you know, my answer was that, that uh, whatever companies are trying to create the metaverse in proprietary platforms is just not going to be it for sure. I mean, we've been having uh, closed worlds in gaming, for example, for a very long time, and that's not the that's not the metaverse. Those are interesting environments, but that's definitely not the metaverse. And so, if if uh, if people are serious about creating a metaverse, um, then uh, they need to be serious about creating some sort of interoperability uh, protocol for. Um, for letting people, uh, you know, visit these different uh, virtual environments, and uh, that's where the hypergrid comes from, comes in, I guess, or something like the hypergrid. So, some either the hypergrid or something like it will, I think, be a, an essential in key ingredient. Um, of course, this also connects with things like blockchain, which honestly I don't really understand, and it seems really weird, but. Um, Maybe I don't know enough about it, uh, but, uh, you know, seems like an interesting approach to protect assets, but without really protection, just sort of as a, uh, you know, as a honor basis, like I was, I paid some money for that thing, um, therefore, please don't copy it or something like that. Uh, maybe one of you can explain to me better how, how, the, how that thing is supposed to work technically. Um, but but in terms of applications, I you know I am still as um, excited as I was ten years ago. That uh, I actually during the pandemic I have been using OpenSIM quite a bit, including in one of my courses. Um, it's a course on introduction to computers, and uh, I developed a bunch of simulations of computing machines and the internet and stuff like that. And so I have students. Uh, uh, groups of 150 students on a grid similar to this one here, uh, OSCC, um, that they do all their projects in uh, in this virtual environment. And that, that has been working pretty well, actually. And um, so, um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited about the future. I don't know exactly what it is, but, uh, but there's some excitement ahead. Oh, that's wonderful. And like you, I've been doing the same on a on a Lobo grid <laughs> mm -hmm. for, for education. So Kevin, um, speaking of this notion of an open world, now the question is, is how would we fund future development so we can encourage more more growth, whether it's an open simulator or whatever open simulator evolves into? Have you thought about decentralized autonomous organization styles or under other kinds of funding models? Um, that's not really an area that I've been thinking too much about. Um, uh, say I haven't really been involved at all in uh, any kind of financial and uh, oh, sure. relating to the uh, project. Uh, well, and what the about way, the uh, future? Yeah, go ahead and talk about the future then where you see Open Simulator going? Well, definitely seeing it, uh, it seems to be used uh, more and more on the uh, educational side. Um, I'm working with a few people uh, on another grid and they're presenting on Sunday. I know that they're uh, looking at um, the educational uh, uh, field, um, including things like uh, learning of languages, for example. Um, so that's definitely, I think, an area that's uh, going to be uh, being used more often um, and by sorry by the way the uh, you bit kind of glossed over some of the uh, changes in 092.0 one of the other big changes I think he didn't mention is that uh, we now also have a, uh, a new scripting engine called uh, Y engine um, that it makes a, a lot of improvements in uh, script performance um, I think a number of people will be interested in checking that out Oh, that's great. So that's part of the multiple scripting engines that we now have in the software. So, um, so what about uh, OSSL functions? Are there any new ones there? Um, yeah, we've had. There's uh, been a few that have been uh, added uh, recently. Um, the best place to do that, we have a there's a list. Uh, if you go into the uh, 
uh, opensimulator.org website. Um, I don't have the link at the moment uh, handy, but we actually have a page where it lists all of the OSL um, uh, functions that are supported. And uh, we can, yeah, okay, thank you, Bet. That's uh, that's the link to the page, and the uh, the new functions will get flagged so that um, people can spot the uh, the stuff that's been recently added. Thank you. I appreciate that. So you, Bet. Uh, what would you like to see possible for the future of Open Simulator? What do you need? First, uh, I need to find uh, the unmute button. I think I found it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's hard to say. Uh, there are still basic things that we need to improve a lot because um, things that we are supposed to be doing, we are still not doing all that well. As you 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 easily see, that goes from um, bad performance, a waste of CPU, waste of bandwidth, waste of things that uh, need a revision on all the protocols. Who, we still use and the kind of code use. Then there is a big challenge that is the evolution of the the software we we, we depend on, like the .NET framework, that is changing in a, an incompatible way. The move to .NET 5 and now .NET 6 will cause us big problems to update our code if you actually decide to do that. But the way the things are moving, we will be forced to do it because I seem, it seems that the mono, that is the platform we use to run OpenSIM on Linux and other platforms, seems to be a dead end without any support anymore. So we have uh, some challenges and we will need a lot of, mainly the support of everyone. I think the support of people is the most important thing we can uh, hope to have. Okay. Thank you. And before you mute, uh, one other thought, because you you just reminded me. I know you've been you've been working with the voice system and the collaboration with Vivox, which for now is is remaining. But do you have any concerns about that for the future? Yeah, I still see no solution. We have we have the project. The the, the big news we are having is about the Echo Voice project that uh, uh, people is, is going to to talk about it today. Liz and, uh, and the AMA group. That's the most um, news we have on that area. We still have the old um, the free switch model that kind of works but does not uh, satisfy but also my main concern about this is that the requirement that we this will bring in terms of high performance voice servers um, some grids already have problems in the providing high performance servers for open sim alone and now they will be facing the need to have also high performance servers for voice that means very low latency machines etc vivox was a very good solution because it completely fixed all the, that infrastructure uh, problems so actually that's what my most concern is is how we will small grids provide and have that infrastructure and how to set up that infrastructure okay and for the moment, I'm, I'm a bit pessimist about uh, voice support in the future. Well, okay. I haven't even thought about it when I was asked to speak earlier, um, but I do have a solution. I've uh, just recently dug out the source code again after uh, the times that I needed to hold on to it have uh, elapsed and I um, have taken a look at it. And it um, uh, does look like it's not really that much work to uh, make it work for OpenSIM as a replacement for SL Voice. It's low latency, it is um, uh, a high throughput, it is 3D um, and uh, supports a channel naming scheme similar to Vivox's, so it should be um, relatively easy uh, to use existing driver code to drive that backend uh, in place of the Vivox one. So um, there is more to come. 
Thank you, Melanie. That's great news. We appreciate it. So um, on that note, I want to thank the core developers for their support for past and present for Open Simulator. You know, it's our favorite open, open source world, and we just love being in here. And I've been thankful. I, I, I can't imagine life without it. So as a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at https conference.opensimulator.org slash schedule. Following this session, the next session will begin at 7.30 a.m. in this keynote region, and it is entitled Teaching Sustainability in an OS Virtual World. Now, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 21 Expo Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and to explore the hypergrid resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with our sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to our speakers and to you, the audience.